Greetings, everyone. Isaiah chapter 60. I want to go there first, and then I'm going to go to Isaiah 45. Uh, Isaiah 60. I want to bring out a point here. Now, we know the famous verse where it says in verse 1, Arise and shine. But I want to, to digress for and explain another part of the verse that's meaningful to you. And if this doesn't happen, um, I hate to tell you, but well, I'm here to tell you, the things you want are not going to happen. Let's lift our hands. Father, thank you for your grace, your wisdom, your, your mighty power. In Jesus' name, thank you for making us the head and not the tail. Help us understand how this works. I have a very powerful word from the Lord today. But I want to explain this verse. It says, Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. And the King James says, Gross darkness covers the earth. It is gross. It's horrible. And deep darkness to people. I don't want to focus on that right now. I want to, I want to teach people how to get blessed. Are you ready to know how to get blessed? If you focus on the darkness too much, you'll have to lose your mind um, in the process and not be a happy a happy sojourner, you know. <laughs> so you don't want to focus too much on the nonsense that's going on uh, out there. Although I love to report the news. How many have seen my Facebook page where I'm putting clips of what's going on with our president in America and all these devils that are trying to come against him, you know. People need to be enlightened, you know, the, the truth. Not the fake news media, you know, the, the corrupt nonsense network, you know what that stands for, or, um, um, you know, the CNN, the MSNBC, the, all those liberal, liberally owned uh, nonsense news. Someone called it the Communist News Network, the Clinton News Network, you know. And people are saying that uh, the money that was stolen along the way in the previous uh, administration, all that stuff, they're still carrying on to come against the good man, Mr. Trump, who only wants to help the world. So very interesting scenario. But uh, they're, they're all going to lose, and I'm praying that they're all going to be voted out uh, come November or whenever their next election is, that they won't continue. And the shifty shift and the penguin Nadler and the pathetic Pelosi, they'll be cast out. I call them the three demons that are going to get cast out in November. Praise the Lord. There's going to be three demons that are going to be cast out in November. Three demons. I'm going to say three demons. Uh, Pelosi, Nadler, and Schiff. Pencil neck. Nadler's like, he's like a fat round guy, so I call him the penguin. He walks like this, you know. So you, let's call him Penguin, like the Penguin Monster from the Batman series. You know, it's like a cartoon show. And Pelosi, they said that her liquor bill on, the, on the, her flights was in the hundreds of thousands, hundred thousand dollars of alcohol. Could you imagine that? And the government's paying for that? Could you imagine these people? And they've given them, I don't know how I got on this, but praise the Lord. <laughs> Just give me a minute, all right? And they, they, they just act like they can have their agenda to do anything they want to do. And uh, like, like it's okay. It's not okay. And the, the Lord is going to, you know, sort it out. So here, here we have a man that wants... Well, this is the way people can get blessed on a mass, you know, society level. He's against abortion. He's for... Uh, Christianity, he's for the church, he's for prayer, he's for all these good things. That's why the devil hates him so much. So if you see someone being hated on so much, you know that there's probably something very good about them. Lift your hands. If someone's hating on you too much, then maybe there's something good about you. You know. I've never been in a place where I've seen so many psychos and mixed up people, you know. People just off. Liars, cheaters own agenda, tripping on their own, tripping over their own trips, you know, half-witted, you know what I mean, weak, praise the Lord, religious, all these bad words, you know. I just keep seeing that. It's really, really disgusting. That's why maybe the King James had it right when he said, gross darkness covers the earth. It covers a lot of people in the church, too. 
How many know that? All this stuff in ch what we call church going on. I mean, some people say they're Christians. This week, I've had a very interesting week. I've seen so many weird people, crazy people, people that say they're saved, and they're completely worthless. Amen. Lift your hands. I don't tolerate that in my, in my world, in my life. I cannot. So, everybody understand if I like... Uh, you know, throw somebody off. I did it for a reason, and you need to respect that and also follow that because there's a good reason behind it. We need to have peace in our life. But I, I've been teaching on this, uh, what I would call success, uh, the, a success series. I, I thought about not putting the date and the year in it because what if we play this back in five years and I have to delete the, you know, the number of the year or the month? Uh, hello, so I'm not going to do it, but I'm... This is another success series. I, I'm, it's volume five that I started like the very end of the year. Um, I think the last Sunday. And now we're going into uh, toward the end of the first month of the year. Okay, so the Lord spoke something very powerful to me. But before I, before I get to that, I want to I want to share something with you. He said, gross darkness come the earth, covers the earth, and... Watch this. He said, but the Lord will arise over you. I want you to write that down somewhere. The Lord will arise over me and people, even Gentiles, he said, which means the unbelievers will see, will see the, will see it and come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. Kings to the brightness of your rising. You have to rise in this thing of the glory of the Lord or else how are you expecting to get everything you want in life? I'm feeling like some people are going to be evicted. Praise the Lord. I, I'm just saying that. Maybe you can read between the lines. Some people that are, you know, just don't act right. You know, they come one way and they flee seven ways. Let them keep fleeing. The seven ways are being open. Praise the Lord. Don't mess with me. Don't mess with God. Don't mess with his purpose. Amen. Okay. <sighs> Eviction notice. I serve it right here in Jesus' name. Watch these people that scramble around, and then one minute they think, uh, you know what I mean? One minute it's this, the next minute is that, and then you're like, Whoosh. I'm shocked at people. Praise the Lord. Really am. So, Isaiah 45, let's look at that. Okay, here it is again. I will go before you and make the crooked places straight. Write that down. I will go before you and make the crooked places straight. I will break in pieces the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron. And I will give you the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places. Lift your hands. This is God. Secret places, hidden riches of secret places. And he said, I, oh, this is the scripture that I love right here. Verse, uh, or the end of verse three, that you will know that I am the Lord who calls you by name. God, one of God's signs and wonders is to bless people. And the Lord said, this is a season for success. He called this year the year of success, okay? So let's apply that, you know, <laughs> how it's supposed to fit. But I also want to... Uh, that you will know that I am the Lord. Imagine that. Lift your hands and ask God for this sign and wonder. People say signs and wonders, you know, when someone gets healed or we feel like the spirit of the Lord moving in a church meeting, whatever. I'm like, that. that's wonderful. People need to get healed. And when you feel the presence of God, that's great. But it's only like an experience for a short time. Something needs to be working in your life as you're going every day, every hour of every day, something is working behind the scenes, on the scene, in front of the scene, on top of the scene, below it, beside it, for you to have this kind of life where the Lord is really blessing you. It's a sign and a wonder. He said that, he said, I'll do this that you'll know. Wow that you will know that I am the Lord who calls you by name. 
I like that sign of wonder. He went on to say further, he said, I called you by your name, I've named you, yeah, that's good, that you've not, though you've not known me, I, I would say enough, you know, because we think we know God, but there's some, some things that we don't know enough about him. Just lift your hand and say, Lord, I want to know you more. I want to know this, this miracle. I don't know a lot of people that, that call this miracle out. We hear about all these other miracles, but this miracle of finance, whew, this miracle of, how can I say, uh, increase and abundance and success, that's a miracle. And that's what people are missing. You know how many people are in like literally psychotic kind of situations in their life? They're just so messed up. People come to me all the time. They write to me all the time. They say, I thought, do I have a ministry to crazy people, hurting people? People are messed up. And most of in the equation has to do somewhere with money. Somebody did them wrong. Something went wrong along the way. And they don't have enough. God wants you to be rich. Again, I don't want to focus on the negative. I want to focus on the positive. He said in verse 2 in Isaiah 45, I'll give you the treasures even of darkness. You know, darkness was talked about in Isaiah 60. Darkness upon the earth. Even in the midst of all that, God will bless you. How many believe that? It doesn't matter who's here, who's there, who's where, who's what, who's why, who's when, who's how. It doesn't matter. God will bless you. Wow. That they may know from the rising of the sun to the setting of there is none beside me. I am the Lord and there's no other. Woo, I love that. All right, I want to talk about this today. I want to talk about this. I have a question. You, you have to ask yourself, what do I want? Write that down. What do I want? What do I want? What do I want? What do I want? God is asking you, what do you want? So I wrote down three very simple things. I wrote down a few simple things. I wrote down seven things, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to like air it out and tell what it is I want. But I want you to understand, you need to know what you want in this life. So I wrote seven things I want. Number one, lots of money. Why? So I can do everything I want to do. Lots of money. You could, you could copy my notes. You can copy my seven. You can take them to yourself. I don't mind. I mean, such as I have, give I unto thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. That's not just for a physical miracle either. That's for a financial miracle. That's for a, a life to be glorious for you. Lots of money. Number two, great health. Now, this goes right in line with the scripture in 3 John that I talked about last, last time we were together. Uh, Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prosper. Prosperity, health, and then emotional, mental well-being, soul prosperity, we can call that. So number one, lots of money, two, great health. Oh yes, health and wealth, without those two things you can't do much in life. You have a lot of wealth, you don't have good health, you can't use it correctly. If you have a lot of good health, but you don't have any wealth, you can't go anywhere or do anything with your healthy self. <laughs> you can just be healthy where you are. Number three, which really should be number one, I'm not saying this by sequence, it's just kind of, it's just how I just thought of it and wrote it. God's presence. Number four, God's anointing. Oh, yes. Number five, God's own words and directions, his instructions, his directions. That mean, means his word, his prophetic direction, all of that. What he's saying, communicating that I can hear and listen and obey and flow. Number six, great, anointed, motivated, and highly skilled and creative and brilliant and diligent people. That's a long list, but you got it. Anointed, motivated, highly skilled, creative, brilliant, and diligent people. Number seven, great facilities that we own with land, buildings, houses, equipments, decorations, with the absolute best and most beautiful of everything there. 
in those places that are possible to have, which of course is totally possible. So now you have to also ask yourself, what do you want? What is it that you want? What do you want in your life? I don't want to start naming things. I think you, you're brilliant enough to do that yourself and you can write it down. You, you write a list today of what it is you want in your, in your blessed life, for your life to be blessed. What do you need for, for your life to be fulfilled? God is interested in you achieving those things. Ask yourself, what is it do you want? Why don't you just take a minute right now and just write a list of things. Type it in your phone, write it with a pen. Think about it. What do you want? And we're going to pray that God's going to give you those things. Just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Kare shayato kase lakachete. What is it that I want? You know, the scripture says too, he'll give you the desires of your heart, right? He'll give you the desires of your heart. But he's the one that thinks of them first. He thought of everything first. So I, I, have, this, I have this like recurring thought going on in me. I have to enjoy life as, it go, as, it, as it's going. I don't want to just have a day where I have to do this and that and that and that and that. I don't enjoy it. You have to be doing what you love doing because the time is too short. So write down what you want. Just make a note to the Lord and we'll pray over it. Isaiah 48, 17, he said it again. I am the Lord your God who will teach you to profit and lead you in the way you should go. He will lead you in the way that you should go. And there's profit and prosperity there. I wrote this, I wrote this line the other day, said that God's having me carry a mantle for prosperity and success. It's an amazing thing. It's an amazing thing. Somebody said to me like, uh, church, like a church thing, the way that they see church. I thought, no, this is not that. This is not that. This is not that. There's a target audience here. We don't fit into anybody's mold. You know, I'm teaching a generation how to prosper. That's a, that's a phenomenal assignment. And you have all these people that have churches here full with people, and they're all misguided, misdirected, lacking, messed up, getting nothing from where they're going. It's shocking to me. It really is shocking to me, you know. So we, we never apologize for what we're called to do. We just do it gladly. But the Lord asked me this question, what do you want? So I began to write down, lots of money, great health. Oh God, we need it. Your presence above everything, of course. Your anointing, your words and your directions. The best people, the best facilities. That's seven things. People includes everything, all relationships, okay? Every relationship you need. Uh, facilities includes everything that you need. House, car, office, building, land. Let's just put that all in one category. All right? His presence is different than his anointing. His presence can be with you, and it doesn't mean that you're just like in the realm of feeling this great anointing flowing right now. for some. The anointing is to bring to people the power of God or what they need, and that can flow, and then it can flow, and it can lift. But his presence is something that's with you all the time. Earlier today, I was sitting somewhere, and I was just listening to a worship song, and I just instantly felt like electrified by the presence of God, and I thought, Lord, this is amazing. You're with me. I, I, I'm so grateful. That's not the anointing. That's not the anointing. Please understand it. That's not the anointing. That's his presence being with a person. Not the anointing. I don't need the anointing like when I'm sitting by myself 
God can visit me and put his, I mean, he can move by his anointing, but it's a purpose for, maybe for him to speak to me or give me some instructions. But that comes by his presence, by the relationship, by the connection. The anointing is to provide what's needed when you're uh, ministering, you know, to people. God is moving that way. You could, you could flow and have the anointing flowing, and, all, and then it's finished, and then you're just like, wow, that was awesome, but now, now what? You need his presence. Are you seeing how it's different? Are you seeing how it's different? The gifts of the Spirit, the ministry gifts, the things that flow supernaturally are for other people. They could also be for us because God could be talking to us, okay, in a scenario. But it, it's, really that, it's really that it's something that other people need. But his presence being with you, wow. So that obviously should be number one on the list. But wh where he is tangible, money flows. Lift your hands. Success begins to happen. Why? Because you hear him. He tells you what to do, and you begin to do the things that he wants you to do, and things begin to happen. Very important. We rebuke the devil right now from everybody's life, every atmosphere, every place. Lord, it'll be, I command it'll be controlled by your presence. Your peace, your joy, your love, your power, everywhere we are, everywhere your sons and daughters are, everywhere people that are connected with me are, wherever they are, you're there. Let people also be, experience this sign and wonder. I tell you, I've, I've rarely heard it, if, if I've heard it emphasized at all, especially not around here, around here where we are in this region of the world. A sign and a wonder that you would know my name, I know your name, that you would know that I am the Lord your God because of my blessing with treasures of wealth. That's a sign and a wonder that I want and need. In abundance. You know, it's amazing people how they look at each other and they, they criticize each other and they fight with each other and they strive with each other and they have no idea how blessed someone can be. They don't know the rank of where they are. They say they do, but they really don't. And it's just like that. It's just like a little, like a bunch of rats on the running on the earth, like cats and rats and dogs and goats and sheep and lions and tigers and bears and zebras and giraffes. And I saw a hippo in a video running to chase away an animal that was attacking another animal. They, they don't just swim, you know. He got on his feet and ran, you know, very strong, forcefully, like with an attitude. So you, no, no creature in, in this world wants to meet a hippo with an attitude. Ooh. Uh, you'll die. Praise the Lord. They don't play. They're beastly. I mean, what a beast, a hippopotamus. Uh, if one walked in the door here, I wouldn't say hi to it. I'd find that door out there and leave you guys to grab my stuff. I'd be like, I, well, I get my bag and my phones and my keys and I go down and get in my car. Say, so once I'm in my car, you know, you can't break through the metal of the door, right? I'm safe. Those things are really amazing. And their teeth are like this, you know? If they get you, or they hit you. So all those things that run on the earth, it's like an endless cycle of madness. In the animal kingdom, there's tremendous order because God made them to act a certain way. But people, the way they do things, oh my. It's, it's, in, it's insanity. Insanity. In, in so many ways. Gross darkness covers covering the earth. So much division and confusion and derision and chaos. But in the midst of that, we need God's presence. So I wrote that down. I said, I need that. I need your anointing. Of course, your anointing is upon my life. The anointing of God is upon me. It doesn't matter really how much I feel or what I want. It's always flowing. It just happens all the time. It's, his hand is upon my life. But his presence in a personal way to be with you, that's the greatest gift. And then lots of money and good health. How many claim that? You can claim that. I need 
You need wealth and health and you need great people. You know, I, I saw something and I like this, so I wrote a little article about it. When the wrong people leave your life, great things begin to happen. But I want to say it in the other way. I want to focus on the positive in this message. I don't want to do anything negative here in this, in this, in this hour. Okay, I, I, I'll do it another day, that stuff. But right now I want to focus on the positive. Let me turn it around. When the right people enter your life, great things begin to happen. But the wrong people have to leave your life for the right people to be able to be there. Praise the Lord. How many can claim that? Write that down somewhere. You need the right people. You, you know, whether you think you need it or not, it's, it's one of the biggest needs you can have in life. With the wrong people, you'll get nowhere. With the right people, you'll get somewhere. With wealth and riches and health and well-being, You'll go so far. With God's presence and touch and anointing, there's nothing that can be restrained from you. There's no devil that can withstand you. There's no adversity that can remain in your life. There's no season of, 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 of sorrow or hardship. It can't remain permanent. It has to break because the anointing destroys every yoke. Isaiah 10, 27 says that. The yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing, the burden removed from your neck, the, the burden taken off your shoulders, the yoke from off your neck, and it will all be destroyed because of the anointing. So I think I picked the seven best things anyone could have. I don't know about you. I don't know what you say you want. But these seven things actually rule life. We're, we're royalty, and we're supposed to be ruling and reigning as kings in this life, royal, and, royal ambassadors of heaven, little gods of the earth. Small g to the big G, right? Under the big G. The offspring of Jehovah, his royal priesthood, his holy nation, his peculiar people. But without his presence, without his touch, without money, without health, without great people, without great facilities. Are you seeing this? How can you do anything? So this is a sign and a wonder that God will afford to his own elect. These seven things. I want you to write them down somewhere again. And please make your own list, okay? Seven things I want. I, didn't, I need them, but I want them. But remember the Lord said, He'll give us the desires of our heart. John 15, 7 says, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you'll ask for what you want, and it will be given unto you. When you have faith like the grain of a mustard seed, it will grow up bigger than a, a huge big tree with branches that will even cover people and land from a little seed. So our faith creates, the desire creates, the passion creates, the intention creates, the direction creates. The, uh, how can I say, the, uh, the spoken word creates. The list you'll write of what you want creates. If you don't know what you want, there's a lot of people around around, they really don't know what they want. They're just involved in so many things, but they don't know how to get what they're getting. But the touch of the glory of the Lord will open up your eyes to see that this life is not for, not for struggling or just surviving. It's for thriving and being blessed in abundance. And when the touch of the glory comes upon you, everything changes for the better. God's presence. I'm redirecting the, the list here to number one. God's presence. Number two, I'll make his anointing. Number three, lots of money. I'm just switching around the sequence here. Great health. The best people and the best facilities of everything, land, property, houses, equipment, decor, you know, furniture, colors, decoration, provision. Facilities also includes like vehicles and equipment and furniture. Are you seeing that? Everything to do with your situation on the earth, transportation, habitation, living conditions, all of that is included in that category of facility. The presence of God and the anointing of God I had to put separately because 
They're two different things. They flow together, but his anointing is not his presence. His anointing comes from his presence. The Holy Spirit is the person, and when his presence is, is manifested, then the anointing can also flow, but they, they flow in three different ways. If the Holy Spirit came and stood in, in with you, and you began to see his glory, I have, and I am all the time, it's absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing life-changing. Most people don't ever experience that. Lift your hands. Praise the Lord. This is a weird place, a weird, a weird environment, a weird bunch of people, but tuh, on them. Amen. God is here. Lift your hands. The presence of the Lord is here. What other people are doing? Oh my. They're, they're, you know, the Lord's been talking to me about who to speak blessings over. Serious people, serious connected people that the Lord's going to bless them and make them rich. Let me tell you one example. I think I have the photo I can show you. Somebody I've been praying for, they were out of work for a while and they, they needed to get blessed, they, they didn't want to tell me some things they were going through, but I've been praying for them. <laughs> and uh, just yesterday, somebody gave him this beautiful car, a big white Cadillac, gave it to them. I don't know if you can see this on the screen. Gave them the car, lift your hands. No money, no payments, no sale, no bill of sale, Gave them the car, will give them the title deed. The car is yours. It's paid off. There's no debt on it. It's yours. This happened yesterday. And the, the day before, they asked me if I had a vehicle to help them with. And I thought, well, maybe I could think about how that can be arranged because they're a really, really good connected person, yeah? But before I could, listen here, before I could even work out the details of how I would arrange that. Somebody called them up and said, come see me, I have something for you. They didn't know what it was. They drove all the way there and went home with this beautiful white Cadillac. Lift your hands. It's a luxury car and it's paid for. This happened yesterday. They called me about, I think we spoke about three o'clock in the morning, we spoke. Is it you No. You people in Kenya, you better catch up, man. <laughs> People in America are way ahead of you. I've very rarely heard of car miracles in Kenya. The people are too stingy. They don't give enough. But people that give, you deserve it. And I prophesy you'll have it. That's one of the prayers I've, I've prayed. Not for everybody, but for the people that are connected with me. God will give you cars, amen, houses and things and land and property. I... I, all these kind of blessings, miracles. I know we all say, I'm, I'm claiming that, I'm claiming. You claim it, but you need to also, you also need to work and how to get in the road to get there. But the touch of God is not a cheap thing either. He says, I'm going to come upon you and you, my light and glory will be seen upon you. Oh my. It's very few people that have that experience. But when you do, all kinds of things begin to happen. So this person in particular also has a business that we're praying for. And the Lord said to me to, to prophesy over them, they'll be, they'll be wealthy. And there's a few people like that. And these are people that are, that are seriously connected. They really, are, they really have done things beyond the norm of anybody else. Uh, if I could tell you all that they've done, what they've done, how they've connected, how they've helped, how they've done things, how they've partnered with us, you, you, you have no idea. And there's other people like that, different parts of the world, and some here too, in Jesus' name, that the Lord's just touching them. I was somewhere, and before I left that place, uh, the, the Spirit of the Lord began to give them a harvest that they never had before, before I left. It wasn't even after I left, like a week later and all that. It was the day, the day when I was still there, and their business got a miracle that they never got before. And it was a big one. Someone lift your hands. It happened before I left. Why? 
They weren't a normal, everyday Jesus. They weren't an everyday kind of, you know, lackadaisical, lazy person. They were doing something beyond the norm to connect in the anointing. And the Lord answered by fire. This is a sign and a wonder that we need. And I prophesy this over the body of Christ that this miracle is going to begin to happen. You'll know the name of the Lord by how he's blessing you financially. How he's blessing you in business. How he's blessing you in favor and miracles. It's going to happen. And this, he said, by this you'll know. You know, he said it like three times, but he made the emphasis. I know your name, but you're, gonna, you're, you're knowing my name because I'm doing this for you, that I am the Lord your God. You know, Paul in Philippians 4.19, when he prayed over those people, that wasn't a provision scripture for everybody, although people take it as such. But you, you don't want to quote that out of context. Out, out of context. Uh, Paul was praying for people that had connected with him. He said, you Philippians did more for me in the ministry than anybody else. Therefore, I'm going to prophesy this. My God, he said, my God, not your God. He didn't say your God or the Lord's going to do it anyway, or it's just a provision scripture, a provision promise from, from the Lord. No, he said, because, you, because if you read the book of Philippians correctly, if you really read the book, read the chapters from one to four, read all those chapters, you, you see how he, the Philippians connected with him greater than anybody else. And then he prophesied over them. And the Lord did it. So I, I, I'm hearing of miracles like this all the time. I want to hear more of them. Somebody else I'm praying for, they're also in the United States. Uh, they, they, they got a major connection with something and it's really big. Why? They've been partnering. They, they've done things more than anybody else. So pe people that are doing a lot, I pray, I'm praying over you that God is going to begin to answer by fire and show you this blessing and miracle. Now I want you to really get a, 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 a list of what it is you want and write it down. As a matter of fact, let everybody begin, let's be more interactive. Write me a direct message on Facebook. Write me on WhatsApp. The WhatsApp number is 254 792 you can write it down, 320-780. In Kenya, 0792-320-780. And uh, send me your list. I want to see it. You want to e if you want to email ministry at thomasmanton.com, and that's on our website. Our website is thomasmanton.com. There's also a a little portal box there that you could write me a message. You could write the list that you have. I will pray over that for you. But I want to see the seriousness of your connection, and God will begin to answer by fire. Th this is the anointing that's upon us. This is the anointing that's upon us that's phenomenal. People get blessed. How many would like to taste of that, the riches of this life, or the riches of this world? You know, you only have one go round. You might as well get blessed. So many things I look upon that I haven't done yet that other people have done, and I get really riled up about it. I think, oh, no. You know, I need to do that in this life. Something I want to do in this life, to visit certain places. You need money to do that. You want to go somewhere, you need money. You just book your ticket, use your card. You have cash to pay for it, and just go. Praise the Lord. Stay in the best hotel, fly in the best airline, just go somewhere. If you don't have the money, you're never going to do it. How are you going to do it? But I'm telling you, I read it from the scripture, yeah? The Lord said, by this you'll know my name because I've blessed you. By this you'll know that I'm your God because I've blessed you. There's so much in this world to do and you need the money. So there's a money miracle coming your way. I declare it in Jesus' name and especially to our friends, new friends, old friends, new acquaintances, middle, <laughs> have been knowing us for a while, people have known us for a long time, and new people coming in. You can tap the grace of this glory and get blessed, and the Lord wants to do it for you, in Jesus' name. I'm Thomas Met. Now, you need to sow. Thank you for partnering with us, all right? You need to sow what God is telling you to do. 
people, you have your tithes, you have your offering, you have your seed, you need to send it, and the information will be on the screen on how to do that. I'm Thomas Manton IV, I'm praying this miracle over you that God will begin to bless your life. Get ready to see it in Jesus' name in new ways. It is the season for all of our success in greater ways than we've ever known. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'll talk to you on the next broadcast. God bless you.